Hey, my name's Hopwood and today we are going to take a look on the performance of AMD's newest integrated graphics card. In this case I was using an Asus TUF A17 on which I deactivated the RTX 3050 it came with to only utilize its Ryzen 7 6800H. AMD's newest mobile 8-core 16-thread CPU with the brand new RDNA 2 integrated graphics, also called RX 680M. It was supported by 4800 MHz DDR5 RAM. I will also test the same GPU inside the Ryzen 7 6800U once I can lay my hands on one of those. So make sure to subscribe so you won't miss that. Thank you! The games will be presented in alphabetical order so it's easier for you to find a title you're looking for. All games were recorded and benchmarked in 1080p if not stated otherwise. The first game for today is Ubisoft's Assassin's Creed Valhalla, which I was testing on the low graphics preset, resulting in a playable 44 FPS on average with a great 1% low of 35 FPS. A game like that is definitely playable with 30 FPS. And if your monitor has a decent adaptive sync capability, 44 FPS is actually pretty comfortable. And the game still looks somewhat decent on low settings. So that's off to an impressive start for an integrated graphics card, I'd say for sure. Next up was one of many Battle Royale games I was testing for this video. The free-to-play title Apex Legends achieved a great 81 FPS on average with a 1% low of 53 FPS on the lowest possible settings for 1080p. Most professionals and hardcore gamers would probably prefer 144 FPS and more, but we're talking about an APU here, so I would say the result is really respectable and the game is definitely very playable that way on this RDNA 2 chip. Forgive my gameplay though, I'm not actually playing stuff like that these days. But as you can see here, even in firefights the FPS didn't drop by a bit. So next. In Battlefield 5 I was testing a 64 player map using the low graphics preset and saw an average of 54 FPS and a 1% low of only 16 FPS. But to be honest the 1% low are so bad due to the fact that I didn't play more than one match. Because in Battlefield 5 you definitely need to play for quite a while for the game to load all the textures and sounds, shaders etc. So after a while of playing the 1% low is going to get better. I just didn't bother to play Battlefield 5 for that long just to low the 1% low. However, 54 FPS are enough to play and enjoy the game, I would say. You could always use lower resolutions like 900p or even 720p and play with a perfectly stable 60 FPS or even more. Remedy's Control is still a pretty demanding title and I achieved an average of 36 FPS with a 1% low of 27 on the low preset which in my opinion actually still looks great. The frame rate is dropping a bit in heavier firefights but as it stays above 30 FPS usually I would consider this playable. I mean that's what you got on a PS4 in games like that back in the day uh, FPS wise. So to me, this is definitely very impressive once again what the RX 680M is pulling off here. Since Cyberpunk 2077 allows to use Fidelity FX resolution scaling, I was actually using it in quality mode combined with the low preset, resulting in a great average of around 50 FPS with a 1% low of 25. Using Fidelity FX is surely making the visuals a bit blurry, but I really want as much FPS as possible in this game as it's a first person game. Considering the fact that GPUs like the GTX 760 or the 1050 can barely play this game, I'm once more impressed. Of course it helps that the Ryzen 7 6800H in this laptop is a very strong CPU, but you wouldn't get much different results with the 6800U for example as it's also a fast CPU and the GPU is still the absolute bottleneck. CSGO actually was the first title in which the RX 680M was a bit disappointing as I saw an average of only 77 FPS on the lowest settings with a 1% low of 43. Of course, sure, it's still playable, but considering I even got better results in Apex Legends, I'm assuming that this might be driver related and could improve in the future.
It surely can't be because of the mobile CPU, as the Ryzen 7 6800H is basically one of AMD's fastest mobile CPUs at the time of recording this video, and it has a decent single core performance. You can also see that the GPU load is jumping up and down, which is a sign of bad optimization. Since everyone and their dog is playing Elden Ring these days, I actually added it to my benchmark cycle. Yay! On the lowest preset, I saw an average of 40 with a 1% low of 28. The older viewers might remember that From Software used to lock their games at 30 FPS, so you can't really complain about that result, I guess. I mean, you can clearly see that it's absolutely playable on this RDN i2 chip. Keep in mind that lower FPS also mean higher input lag in a game where timing seems to be very important. Well, get good is what they say, right? Oh, and by the way, if you're new to the game, don't open the chest you'll find at the end of this cellar. Trust me. Next. I was actually testing Far Cry 6 with two settings. First, I fired it up with 1080p on low settings and activated anti-aliasing, which resulted in an average of 41 FPS with a 1% low of 32 FPS. And then I've tested it on 720p low settings and deactivated anti-aliasing because you probably want as much FPS as possible in a first-person shooter. And that resulted in a much, much higher F average FPS of 68 and a 1% low of 48 FPS. As you can see, the frame time graph is perfectly flat. Definitely playable. And thanks to AMD's Fidelity FX sharpening, it actually still looks okay-ish. In Fortnite, I was testing two settings as well. First, I started with the low preset and 100% resolution scaling using the regular DirectX 11, resulting in an average of 93 and a 1% low of 50, which is of course definitely playable. As the used laptop has an adaptive sync screen, it actually feels perfectly fluid. The second test was made with the performance mode, which despite the ugly tree textures worked just fine and I saw an even higher average FPS of 134 with a pretty low FPS of 59. And you can see the frame time graph is a bit weird. Still, it's perfectly playable. I would just probably prefer the standard engine over the performance mode personally, as the trees are just disgusting. In Forza Horizon 5, I was using the low preset and activated MSAA two times to achieve a great average of 68 FPS and a 1% low of 26 FPS. I have to point out though that I was getting short stutters throughout the benchmark session when I was free roaming over the map, as you probably can see here over to the left. Not sure if they would disappear after playing for a longer period. They could be a no-go for some people and I hope they'll get fixed by other driver updates or game updates in the near future as it can't be the CPU nor the RAM which wasn't even fully utilized. It didn't seem to happen that often when actually being in a dedicated event. In Horizon Zero Dawn, the Radeon RX 680M impressed me once more with an average of 33 FPS and a 1% low of 26. The game still looks great and is actually enjoyable on an integrated GPU. Amazing! I didn't use the Fidelity FX resolution scaling though, as I don't like it if all the grasses and plants start to flicker that much. But AMD certainly managed to pull off an APU that is able to play basically every game with 30 FPS or more on 1080p, and that's really, really impressive. I'd probably cap the FPS at 30 in this title though. Of course, firing up League of Legends didn't cause any problems for the RX 680M and resulted in an average of 128 FPS and a 1% low of 97 on the highest possible settings. But of course, even older APUs were able to provide a good experience in this very light title. I've just added this to complete the video, I guess. So, what's next? So, Lost Ark is still pretty popular and it's free, which is why I added it to this video as well. On medium settings, with anti-aliasing, I saw a good average FPS of 55 with a 1% low of 32. The frame time graph seems to be a bit chaotic, but it didn't mind that while testing. The game is perfectly playable that way. We could of course easily achieve 60 FPS by lowering the graphics a bit. 
Using the lowest settings in Microsoft's Flight Simulator resulted in an average of around 32 FPS with a 1% low of 23 when flying over New York City for around 10 minutes. The average FPS highly depend on the scenery though. Once there are more trees, the FPS goes down. For example, when you fly over the Himalaya, you would get around 42 FPS, which is an improvement of around 30%. But actually anything above 25 FPS could be considered acceptable as this isn't a fast paced game in most cases. So Audion A2 can actually play Microsoft Flight Simulator at 1080p. Impressive once again. When running No Man's Sky at 1080p and lowest settings the RX 680M achieved an average of around 69 FPS with a 1% low of 38. I actually didn't expect that much FPS to be honest. The game is still getting optimized to this date. Of course the FPS depend on the planet and the vegetation as well and in space it should even be higher, but it should always remain way above 30 FPS. As you can see frame times are great once the game ran for a few minutes. So call me impressed. Another battle royale game for today is PUBG, which ran just fine on the lowest preset and I saw an average of 74 FPS with a 1% low of 47, which is pretty decent. Definitely felt fluid and playable. Thanks to 1080p it's easier to spot and hit enemies even in greater distances. I actually managed to score a 250 meter kill later in this match, which I unfortunately didn't record, but thankfully the replay function proves it happened. So yes, you can really enjoy this game on the RX 680M as well. In Valorant I achieved a very playable average of 113 FPS in a deathmatch with a 1% low of 72 FPS. Frame times were super smooth. I just don't get why the game always is slower than expected, at least for me, or is it is it just that way? It can't be the CPU's fault, as it's a very fast one. So, next. Today's last battle royale game was Warzone, on the lowest possible settings resulting in an average of 52 FPS with a 1% low of 20, which would be better if I played more than one match. To bad it didn't achieve 60 FPS on 1080p as I actually prefer that over the blurry resolutions 900p or even 720p. Nevertheless the game is playable thanks to 60GB of RAM and the decent performance of the Audion A2 chip. Of course I had to benchmark The Witcher 3 as well. On medium settings the RX 680M got me an average of 42 in Velen with a 1% low of 28. Thanks to the fast CPU the gameplay was actually pretty smooth and the graphics were enjoyable to say the least. I always point out that a PC that can run The Witcher 3 with 30 FPS and above is getting my respect. If I recall it correctly the GTX 960 desktop GPU would achieve similar results in this game by the way, just for your information. Next. Today's last game is actually World of Warcraft, which I had to record with the RTX 3050 because I just couldn't get the laptop to use the external HDMI output to record it with my capture card when deactivating it. So I had to benchmark it without recording and then record it with the RTX 3050. But the RX 680M actually managed to give me an average of 72 FPS on ultra settings with a 1% low of 30 when running around Stranglethorn Valley and Ogrima. So I'm assuming it should get more than 60 FPS even in newer areas and more than 30 FPS even in crowded raids. And I mean we're talking about the high settings here, you could always lower them. But of course the game is almost 18 years now, so it should be playable with a modern APU. Now that's all for today. If you liked this video please feel free to like and subscribe for more videos like this in the future. Thank you. Take care, see you next time, bye bye and tschüss.